Good day, everyone. You're welcome back to our module one, session two. If you remember, in the last um, previous session, we defined statistics and we gave reasons why the study of statistics is important. We also stated the uses of statistics and um, the types of statistics as well as the limitations with statistics. In this study session, we are going to be talking about variables and uh, how uh, variables are being measured. We'll talk about the meaning of variables and then we will describe the different skills of measurement. My name is Abdul Hakim Abayami Olorukoba. I'm a public health physician and lecturer in the Department of Community Medicine at Mandobello University, Zaria. Um, sit down, fasten your seat belts, and enjoy the ride. So this is part of the um, module one, the introductory aspect of this course. If you remember, um, our study session one had to do with meaning of statistics. Now or in study session two, where we'll be talking about variables and uh, measurements. These are our learning objectives. Each um, student is expected to be able to define variables, know the types of variables, understand how variables have been measured, understand the skills of measurement. We'll give a summary and then we'll finally conclude. Yeah, so, so what do we understand by the term um, variables? You know, if, if you consider what you have in your uh, lecture notes or your study material, yeah, it states that it's the phenomenon that does not remain constant in successive trials, but vary from trial to trial. That's what's called a variable. Well, that's, for me, that's a little confusing, especially for people that are not very particular or, or not very, very familiar with this concept. So in order to define a variable, right, you uh, uh, just consider a variable as a kind of a container containing data elements, right? So you can see that um, you have like a container, yeah, and that's the variable. And then within the container, you want to put in data elements. So any aspect of an individual or an animal or a thing that is measured and uh, take any value for different individuals or cases is called a variable. So a variable, as the name implies, is something that varies. So if you think about any aspect of an individual, let's take individuals, for example, right? And any aspect of that individual that changes from one individual to another can be called a variable. This is different from a constant. Something that is a constant does not change. If you remember mathematics, when they say K is constant, you know, something like that. So something that is a constant does not actually change. But something that is a variable is must vary and that's why it's called a variable so to put this in a better perspective let's give an example of something like um, like sex right so the data that you're actually collecting from the individual is not the sex itself but the particular attributes of that sex so imagine the sex is the container right but what you are collecting and put into the container is whether the person is male or female so the data element they are actually collecting is male or female right and another example that we can give is say tribe so tribe is the variable but the data elements that were putting into that variable container is whether the person is hausa yoruba Igbo, or kanuri or whatever right so any aspect of an individual that changes from one individual to another is called a variable it's really important that you put this into perspective and you understand it from this lens or from this point of view such that any time that you hear the concept of a variable you're able to um, understand and picture this and have a kind of mental image that allows you to understand why is it important for you to understand variables you need to understand this because it's the variables 
that will determine what kind of analysis or what kind of interpretation that you are giving to the data that you're working with. So it's really important that you put this into perspective all the time. Anytime in which you want to perform some form of statistical analysis or you're performing some form of uh, tests, it's pertinent that you know what kind of variable you are dealing with. And this is the one, this is what would tell the kind of analysis that you can um, do and the kind of decisions that you can make from the data that you have. Um, so um, there are different uh, types of variables, right? Variables can be um, divided into two different types, right? You have categorical variables or qualitative variables, and then you have quantitative variables. So you can either say variables are quantitative or qualitative. Now, this should not be confused, right, with the types of research. And it should definitely also not be confused with the types of data that you have because you can also have something that is called qualitative or quantitative research and you can also have data being quantitative or qualitative but this time we're not talking about data we're not talking about research we're talking about variables right so variables can either be quantitative or qualitative now, um, if the container, remember in the previous slide, we mentioned that the variable is a container, right? So if the container can only accept data and the data that you put into that container, it can only accept data in the form of numbers, then that container is said to be a quantitative container, so a quantitative variable, right? Well, now, when this container only accepts words in, or like names, not numbers um, it is said to be categorical or qualitative right so an example is like tribe imagine that you have a container and you want to put in information about tribe you're only going to be putting in um, whether it's hausa yoruba Igbo. you're not putting in numbers one two three four and the rest like that so the only data that you can put into a tribe container is hausa yoruba and Igbo, or other any other language please it's really important that you understand this concept and that's why i brought about this um way in which uh, i said you should put this in form of like containers so variables are of two types you have um qualitative or categorical variable or quantitative or something that we call numeric variables so so just like we're saying um there is, these are further examples for variables we said they are uh, they can be divided into qualitative or categorical and then quantitative or numeric on the other side so for qualitative variables an example is eye color and you can see the different attributes that you can find in that that that, that can enter that container of eye color blue green brown another example is like a breed of dog for some of us that are on this call that are veterinarians I'm sure you understand that there are different kinds of dogs, right? There are different kinds of breeds, the lab, the bulldog, the poodle, you know, and the rest like that. Another example is level of education. We're very familiar with this high school, associate degree, bachelor's degree, um, primary, secondary, tertiary, like that. So there's a reason why this is called categorical variables, because you can see that the actual attributes that we're using, they are in categories. They are not in numbers. This is not to say that you cannot use numbers to represent them, but these numbers are not real numbers, right? So um, another example is marital status. And we're all aware of this. We're all familiar with this. You have single, married, divorced, separated, and the rest like that. You can see that the different levels, uh, the data that can enter into the variables are in different categories. And that's why it's called a categorical variable. On, on the other hand, um on the on the other hand if you see um quantitative variables right uh examples are the number of students in the class now the kind of data that enters into this um container is numbers and they're actually real numbers two students three students four students right another example is the population size of a city so the population in one city can be uh, 50,000 in another city, 10,000. These are actual numbers. 
and then the age of the individual is also um, a quantitative variable and the height of an individual and the rest now now we're picking these variables one by one right uh, these types of variables one by one remember we said the variables can be divided into two we have the quantitative variables on one side and the qualitative variables on the other side so quantitative variables are also known as numeric variables and these variables are called numeric because the elements that can enter those data elements that can enter into the container is the, the actual numbers right and so it's called a numeric variable so you can either have a quantitative or numeric as the name implies now for these quantitative variables they are further divided into two there's what we call discrete and continuous and it's pertinent that you're listening very closely here you know when the kind of numbers that can enter into that container right that container that that takes numbers that variable that takes numbers when that those numbers can only take certain values there are some fixed values that it can take right this kind of quantitative variable is called a discrete variable right it's discrete in the sense that it is whole it, 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 it doesn't take fractions it doesn't take um, decimal points it's discrete like for example if you say how many children uh, that a woman has how many children ever born right so you expect to hear 4 5 15 20 right but you don't expect to say a woman to say one and a half so the number of children ever born variable is a discrete variable right it can only take some certain values and those values are whole numbers one two three four five right but on the other hand you can have what is called a continuous variable and as the name implies it's really continuous so it can take multiple kind of values there the unlimited number of values imagine that we're dealing with something that has decimal places and so you say 1.5 and then another person says 1.55 and then you have 1.555 so even just in between 1.5 and 1.6 it is continuous it's, it's almost like it's never ending you can have 1.5 you can have 1.55 you can have 1.555 you can have 1.559 you can have 1.5555 just between 1.5 and 1.6 it's like a never ending uh, um, story so that's what we mean by a continuous variable so when we say variable is continuous we understand that this variable is numeric and that the values the, the number of values that enter into that variable container are numbers that have decimals they don't have any particular setting value they can have different kinds of values and these values are um, can be in decimal places so we're going to now quickly go into um, how do you measure these variables because everything in statistics has to do with some form of measurement right you uh, initially you started with nothing and then you took a measurement and then it's from that measurement that you uh, in measurement in quote you collected data and then it's from that data that you now do your analysis perform your analysis and then come to uh, some conclusion or make a decision about the data that you've collected right so the type of analysis that you do on the data depends on how the values of the variable was measured I'm, I can't say this more than more than this right and, and I, I will continue saying this until you get it very clearly the type of analysis that you do on the data depends on how the values of the variable was measured right so it is important before you do any kind of statistical analysis that you understand how the data was measured this will guide you on what kind of statistical test to use what is appropriate for this kind of uh, variable and the rest like that so bear in mind that any time in which you go and collect data you are taking like a form of measurement right and for this kind of measurement there are different levels of measurements so and, and 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 the kind of level of measurement that you use will determine how you're going to summarize this data if you're using descriptive statistics or how you're going to extrapolate or um, make some inference if you're using inferential statistics
Okay, so, so that brings us up to the concept of um, the scales of measurement, right? The scales of measurement is trying to define the way in which the data points that are put into the variable, right? How that variable pres prescribes you measuring those data points, right? So this describes the way in which the data of the variable should be measured. It's very, very important, or how the data is measured. It's very important that you understand this concept. So and based on what we call the scales of measurement, there are four different scales, right? You have the nominal scale, you have the nominal scale, the ordinal scale, the interval scale, and then the ratio scale. Now, what I want you to understand is that these first two scales are what is used for measurement of qualitative variables. These are variables that are categorical in nature, right? And then these last two scales are what is used for measurement of quantitative variables. These are variables that have numbers, numeric in nature. So it's very important that you understand that. So just imagine that there's an imaginary line here that divides this. The up is quantitative, which is numeric variables, while the lower ones is um, uh, qualitative or categorical variables, right? And the least type of measurement is the nominal, and the best kind of measurement is the ratio scale. Um, if you are you're doing statistics or biostatistics, you want, your, or you're taking a measurement, you want a variable that was measured using a ratio scale because it's only when your variable is measured using a ratio scale that you can do a lot of other kinds of analysis and you can do all sorts of um, stuff so the scales of measurement actually describes the way in which data is measured or data should be measured that's the data for a particular variable and we'll go one by one into trying to understand what these different scales of measurement is but just bear in mind that the two lower ones here are for qualitative variables and then the two upper ones here are for categorical variables so so the first level measurement here um, the first scale is called the nominal scale so it's, it's the first level of measurement scale in which you have the uh, you have two or more categories remember I said it's used for categorical um, variables right so you have two or more categories and these uh, categories are distinct, right? No category seem to be bigger than the other. All you know is that the kind of measurement in which you are taking is just in categories. So, and only qualitative variables have nominal data. So you can only put in a, in a container of a qualitative variable, you can only put uh, nominal data or ordinal data, but let's, we're starting from nominal data. So it's really important that you understand um, this this is an example so you have a variable that is called gender right the data that goes into that variable right is either male or female so you can see it has two distinct categories it's either male or female and you cannot choose both categories you either choose male or you choose female right so uh, this is called a nominal scale because we're not going to be able to say one category is bigger than the other or male is better than female or female is better than male we just know that a male is different from a female so if you're going out to the field and you want to collect data and the kind of variable in which you want to collect is a variable that is measured on a nominal scale the attributes of that variable that you'll be putting into that structure is going to have two or more distinct categories another example like you have here is the hair color right so you can see options like brown black blonde gray and other kinds of hair colors right so this is something that is measured on a nominal scale we're not going to say um, blonde is better than brown or brown is better. we just know that by the time you see this you know this is blonde right and then this is black and then this is brown now the distinct thing here is that nominal is coming from the word name right so what makes one attribute different from the other attribute is just in their name this is male this is female we call it male we call it female the name is male uh, and the other name is female right but like for hair color also uh, this one is brown that's the name we call the color uh, black blonde right gray and others so the distinct feature is just in their name 
notice that if you've collected data that is on a nominal scale right you cannot subject this data to any form of um, calculations so, sort of like you cannot add you cannot subtract you cannot divide you cannot multiply because you don't even have numbers you need numbers to be able to do that right so that's that for the nominal scale we'll be going into the ordinal before going into the ordinal scale before going to ordinal scale we have the characteristics of um, nominal scale so like i said earlier it divides the variable into two or more categories so example is whether you agree or disagree or yes or no like or male or female right it is qualitative in nature right but you know sometimes you can have a nominal scale variable that is qualitative in nature but people want to put in some numbers so when they put in numbers these numbers are not actual real numbers for example you have a variable that says um uh, have you ever uh, have you ever um been pregnant before for for a female right and the option is yes or no some statisticians or some people to make the analysis a little easy they would want to put in oh, number one for yes and number zero for no for example right but this one and zero they are just like names that are used to help you in categorizing uh, or identifying those objects it's not that they are it's real one or real zero so you cannot say you cannot add <coughs> excuse me or subtract okay and then the other thing about nominal scale is that like i've just said <coughs> the numbers don't define the object the number is just assigned and these numbers are not actual numbers yeah now we're going to ordinal scale as for ordinal scale the, the we also have categories remember i said the nominal and the ordinal scale actually used for measurement of categorical variables right so just like the nominal scale we have categories right but the ordinal scale shows some level of some ranking so unlike the nominal scale the categories can be ordered in the nominal scale the categories cannot be ordered they are just different we know male is different from female that's all we know but in the ordinal scale this is a higher level than the nominal scale the ordinal scale has categories but these categories are ranked right it identifies and describes the magnitude of a variable along with the information provided by the nominal scale ordinal scales give the rankings of these variables or those variables you know um so so that's that for the um for for the ordinal scale you can see that clearly one category is bigger or is better than the other this is unlike the ordinal the uh, nominal scale so the ordinal scale has a characteristic of the nominal scale in in that it has categories right but the categories are ordered and you can see that one category is is, is clearly larger or better than the other so there are several examples that we can have for example is like ranking of school students you have first second third and then you can also have evaluation of uh, frequency of outcomes such as very often often not often not at all and then there's something that we even call the Likert scale which i'm sure a lot of us know about but the numbers that are actually assigned here they are not real numbers they are not numbers that you can use in any kind of calculation addition subtraction multiplication or division so this is an example of a Likert scale you have strongly agree agree neutral disagree strongly disagree and remember sometimes if you look at this in even in questionnaires <coughs> they might put some numbers on them right number one number two number three number four number five and just like these are not actual numbers they are just used to um represent um some of these things to make it easy to follow note that please if a variable is measured on a an ordinal or nominal scale it is a qualitative variable okay 
So this brings us to the inter interval scale. The interval scale is the third level of measure uh, of measurement measurement scale, right? It's defined as the quantitative measurement scale, in which the difference between two variables is meaningful. In other words, the variables are measured in an exact manner, uh, not as a relative way like we saw in the the previous um, um, the previous other scales that we've seen. Right. So here, the difference between this and the ordinal and the interval scale is that they are represented by numbers, and these numbers are actually real numbers. All right. The only thing here is that it has no true zero point. The zero point is arbitrary. And I'll give a perfect example. A perfect example is like um, temperature in 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 um, Celsius. Right. So if you made a measurement in in degrees Celsius, for example, and you said zero degrees Celsius. Yeah. So this zero degrees Celsius doesn't mean that it is actually zero. That zero is not a true zero. Why is it not a true zero? When you say zero, it means something is not there. Right. So and if you are measuring temperature, when you say zero, we expect you to have it's neither cold nor hot but i'm sure you all know that if you touch something that is zero degrees celsius it's freezing right it's freezing so that's very cold so and and, and because zero degrees celsius is actually something else on another scale 32 degrees of fahrenheit or something else on another scale so the zero that you are seeing here is not a true zero temperature is a perfect example there are so many examples that we'll give as we go along but this is what you should put in mind so on an interval level scale is a quantitative variable because what you have is numbers at this point in time you can now start thinking of addition and subtraction but there's no multiplication and division you can't do any multiplication and division because for you to do multiplication and division you need a true zero point okay the interval scale does not have a true zero point so you have numbers these numbers have um, equal spaces between them one number is greater than the other in, in that sequence or in that range, you can see that the only thing is that the zero point is not a true zero point. So these are the key characteristics of um, the interval scale and the data that you get from the interval scale, right? Remember I said the interval scale is quantitative. So you can measure the difference between values. That means you can do subtraction. You can even do addition. The interval scale can be discrete. If you remember when we were talking about quantitative variables, we said quantitative variables can be discrete or continuous as whole numbers. So this interval um, uh, scale data, you can have something that is discrete and then you can have something that is continuous. All right. And then you can also subtract values between the two variables that help to understand the difference between them. Uh, this is a, a, a very good characteristic that makes it different from that of nominal and ordinal because that of nominal and ordinal the nominal level scale you have names you cannot subtract you cannot divide what will you get from subtracting brown from red or something like that right or red plus brown doesn't make any sense you know so um, the interval level measurement allows you to calculate also mean and median of variables right so because you are dealing with numbers interval data is especially useful in like business social scientific analysis and strategy because of it's straightforward and it's quantitative because it has numbers so most people can understand it a little more right so you have um, uh, a, a different level scales and then the interval level is the third level um, scale finally we have the um, ratio scale this is the fourth level of measurement scale and uh, as i've said before it's quantitative in nature so it's numeric it's a type of variable measurement um, uh, scale that allows researchers to compare the difference between the different intervals right the ratio scale has a unique feature because it possesses the character of origin of um, zero points the zero point is actually true okay so um Is measured in numbers also just like the interval scale is the highest and the best scale if you are collecting data you want to collect data using this scale and this is the one that you'll be able to perform all sorts of statistical analysis 
with this it has a true zero point so the zero point is is true when you say something is zero it is zero for example if you say zero centimeters in height if you check you're not going to see anything there so zero is actually zero so it has a true zero point this is the major difference between interval level scale and the ratio level scale so most numeric variables actually are in ratio scale mostly if they give you a list of numeric variables say a thousand only a few of them are on interval scale most numeric variables are on a ratio level scale and this is the highest level of measurement that you can have and you can use to uh to measure which is is really important All right so an example of a ratio scale is a weight in kg right when you ask somebody what is your weight in kg you have uh um, different weights that that, that 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 come up that's a ratio level scale okay so this brings us to the end thank you very much for staying up to the end of this video in this session uh, remember that we discussed the different types of variables we talked about what is a variable we talked about the distinction uh, <clears throat> uh, between quantitative and qualitative variables and then we talked about how the unit also examines measurements and scales of measurements um, for qualitative and quantitative variables remember that we said that because of you had two types of variables whether um, it was quantitative or qualitative that you also have the different measurements that you can use or scales of measurement for the qualitative variable the scales of measurement is the nominal and the ordinal scale while for the quantitative variables the scale of measurement is the interval and ratio scale and remember i said that the most desired measurement scale of measurement is the ratio scale because with the ratio scale you can do all forms of um, analysis thank you very much for listening don't forget to go to the end of um, go to the link to uh, the link at the description to do the quiz for this um, particular um, study session if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask uh, please also like this video um, such that it helps the uh, the channel and it helps also um, me to make further uh, contents uh, like this like i said if you have any questions please feel free and as usual this is abdul hakim olur koba and i'm signing out thank you very much see you in the next study session bye bye